Good morning, and welcome to the Desert Report. I'm Ryan Phillips, and we've got a great lineup for you today on this special edition of the 4 o'clock news. Many people often mistake deserts as a barren tundra of nothing more than a bunch of orange sand. Deserts are much more than just a bunch of sand. Technically, deserts are regions where there's little to no vegetation, but I'm no geologist. Patrick Fricke, on the other hand, I'm here in the Sahara Desert, also known as the world's largest desert. The climate and weather here is pretty typical of every other desert. No rain, no water, no vegetation. Oh look, it's a camel. Pretty cool, huh? Those bad boys can go up to three months without water. That's pretty good adaptation right there. Oop, and now I'm in another desert. This one's cold and happens to be high above sea level. It's kind of hard to breathe up here. A little fun fact for you real fast. The hottest temperature ever recorded was found in the desert in Libya, where the temperature was recorded to be as hot as 136 degrees. What are you going to do about that? Subtropical deserts generally fall on the equator, where the air becomes very warm and humid. The sunlight is really intense, and any and all water evaporates almost immediately. Deserts formed in rain shadows. As winds blow at low elevation over the ocean towards the shore, the air in the wind absorbs moisture and becomes quite humid. Upon reaching a coastal mountain range, this humid air must rise. As the air rises, it expands and cools. The water it contains condenses and falls as the rain on the seaward flank of the mountains, nourishing a coastal rainforest. As a consequence, a rain shadow forms, and the land beneath the rain shadow becomes a desert. Coastal deserts formed along cold ocean currents. Cold ocean water cools the overlying air, but absorbing heat and decreasing the capacity of air by absorbing heat and decreases the capacity of the air to hold moisture. An example of this is the Humboldt Current, which carries water northward from Antarctica to the western coast of South America. It cools and dries the air that blows east over the coast. That makes it so that it rarely rains on the coasts of the areas in Chile and Peru. Deserts formed in the interiors of continents. As air masses move across the continent, they lose moisture by dropping rain, even in the absence of coastal mountain range. Thus, when the air mass reaches the interior of a large continent, such as Asia, it has, a gro it has grown quite dry, so the land beneath becomes arid. Back to you in the studio, Ryan. Thanks, Fricky. Now let's take it to Timmy Tucker Torrigan, reporting live from the California desert. I'm out here in California talking about erosion, there's two different types of erosion. There's water erosion and there's wind erosion. So for water erosion, when it rains out here, you don't want to be out here. There's no plant cover, there's no sheet wash, and there's no stream flow. So a lot of the debris gets into the air and is a very effective in changing the environment. And then there's wind erosion, and there's two types of loads, if you know what I'm saying. There's the surface load, which stays really low to the ground. It's very powerful. It's so powerful it can strip paint off a car. And it stays like two meters above the ground, and it affects the immediate environment of the desert and changes the environment a lot. And then there's the suspended lead, which goes up into the atmosphere. It doesn't affect the desert, but it affects the organisms in the atmosphere. Back to you, Ryan, in the studios. Thanks, Timmy Tucker. Now let's take it to Dusty the Dust Bowl Smith, reporting live from the Grand Canyon. Dust Bowl Smith here, reporting on some deposition. Look, there's my pup, big dog. I'm here looking at some erosion off cliffs. As more and more falls off to the side, they collect at the base of the cliffs and form piles called talus abrams. These piles survive a long time in desert climates. Flash floods like the ones behind me carry away these rocks and even debris this size of me. Once these floods exit the valley, they spread out into a larger flat open space. The current dies down and causes the sediment to settle. Once the water clears out, what remains is an alluvial fan. If, it a de if a desert is so lucky to receive a wet spring, these flash floods can form temporary lakes in the lower parts of the basin called playa lakes. On the contrary, if it is unusually dry, the water 
just sweeps into the ground and forms a dry, flat surface known as playas. When there's a lot of water flow, it can create a, a permanent lake. If these lakes have no outlet, they can become very salty. As the water evaporates, the salt remains, hence the birth of the Great Salt Lake in Utah. Now back to Ryan in the studio. As Patrick mentioned earlier, desert landscapes have many different shapes and forms. Sandy deserts aren't the only type of deserts. With that being said, desert landscapes are created in large part by erosion. As cliff faces retreat, the cliffs retain roughly the same shape. Now this is called a cliff retreat. As the erosion continues, plateaus eventually become isolated hills, ridges, or columns. When a flat-topped hill is formed, it's called one of three things. Mesas for the big dogs, buttes for the regular sized ones, and chimneys on a smaller scale. What do I do with my hands? Now, there are many problems with desertification. First off, it's been accelerated in the modern era due to drought, overpopulation, careless agriculture, and diversion of water sources. Large numbers of people migrate away from deserts to nearby towns and eventually cause desertification of these areas as well. Plowing and overgrazing removes soil preserving grass. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to get that if there's no water, the soil dries out. When animals trample the soil, it compacts and becomes incapable of soaking up water. Desertification also leads to mass starvation. And we all know, big dogs gotta eat. That's all for today's edition of the 4 o'clock news. I'm Ryan Phillips. Thanks for watching.